This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries. And welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. That's because the kingdom is the center of our universe, the kingdom of God. Amen. That God the Father is on the throne and Jesus is seated on the throne beside the Father God, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. Amen. So there are many adversaries, many enemies of the Lord that are in this earth realm, but the Lord has called us to overcome by our faith. Amen. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. So tonight I want to start in Jeremiah chapter three, Jeremiah chapter three, verses 14 and 15. It says, return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you, and I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. I had heard that scripture before, even before I had um, looked it up with my own eyes or seen it with my own eyes, I would hear in my Christian life, I would hear people say that God is married to the backslider. And they meant it in such a way where they were saying, it does not matter what you do. You may be in sin, but God is, is married unto you. So you are okay because I want you to know that God, the one that God is married to is the backslider. And that is not quite the sentiment of that scripture. Yes, God is married to the backslider, but it says, return, O backsliding, backsliding children. So, so the theme of that is return unto the Lord from your backsliding. Amen. Because God is faithful. Amen. And so he wants you to be faithful unto him. Amen. And so to help you, the Bible says that God will give you shepherds after his own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And so the purpose, part of the purpose of ministry is to feed the sheep. Amen. Here it says with knowledge and with understanding. Amen. So you'll know how to walk with God, to walk in God's ways, to walk in the wisdom of God. Amen. And so God looks to the ministers. He looks to the shepherds that Jesus even said to Peter, do you love me? He says, Lord, you know, I love you. Then he said to feed my sheep. Amen. And so before Jesus was restored, that Jesus said to him before Peter was restored, Jesus said to him three times to feed my sheep. Amen. And so that is, that is the mandate, amen, to feed the sheep with knowledge, amen. Knowledge comes from knowing the Lord. It's not book learning or, or simply reading words on a page. It is intimately knowing the Lord. And so it is the living word, amen, that introduces you to a living God so that you can know him, and that you can know his ways through knowledge and with understanding. Amen. And so that is what I want to focus on a little bit. I want to focus on the fact that the question that is often asked in this, in this day, in this age, we're in the last days, and there's so much information out there. There is so much um, technology out there. Amen. It's very interesting that in the book of Daniel, amen, where it talks about the stone that was not cut out by hands and it crushed that image, amen, that represented the different kingdoms through time. The last kingdom was a kingdom of the feet were made of clay and iron. Amen. Partly clay, partly iron. And they did not adhere in that the, the clay does not adhere to the iron, amen, which is speaking of this day, 
amen, where the iron not only represents strength such as armies, but also technology, amen. And so that's what they're trying to do. They, amen, those that are opposed to God, they are enthralled by technology, artificial intelligence. And that's all, that's the buzz. That's all they're talking about, how to fuse a man, artificial intelligence with man. They want to put chips inside of people. Now you, you know where all that, the, the Antichrist, the beast, the 666, amen, the mark of the beast, amen. Well, part of that is the, the fusion, but that stone, which was not cut out by hand representing Jesus, amen, it crushed that image, showing that that will not be able to be accomplished, that, that fusion of man and machines, that fusion of man of, with, with the, that, that type of artificial intelligence, amen, partly, partly man, partly robot. That's what they want, amen. You said that is, that is far out. That is what they speak of openly. Amen. And so God wants you to know what is going on in this last days. Amen. So you can know what is real and what is not real. Part of technology, the problem with technology, amen, the internet, amen, social uh, media, news, TV, and all those things, that they are able to produce things which look like they are real, and yet they are not. You say, well, what does that have to do, Apostle Calvin, with the preaching of the gospel? You have to be able to discern what is real. You have to be able to discern what is right. Amen. And so you have to be able to discern what is the truth. Where does your truth come from? Amen. Where your truth should come from the Lord. Where, where does your facts come from? Your facts should come from the Lord because everything else can be manipulated in these, in these last days to produce false images and false truths and false narratives so that you won't fall for that which is false. Amen. That one of the words for idols is falsehood, that, that which is false. Amen. And an idol is simply an image of the false, amen, to get you to bow down to the image of that which is false, amen. And so you're not to lift your soul to an idol. You're not to bow down to what is false, amen. So you say, well, how can I know what is real and what is not real? And, and what is my part as a believer? Amen. Knowing what is real and what is not real. I said, God says, I will give you shepherds after my own hearts to feed you with knowledge and understanding so that you can walk in the wisdom of God, the ways of God to know what is right, what is true. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 14. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, beginning with verse 12 through 16. Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12 through 16. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you're cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. So the devil said in his heart, I want you to mark that. He said it in his heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook 
kingdoms who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities who did not open the house of his prisoners. Amen. And so there will be a day, amen, when the devil will be thrown into the pit. Amen. And there will be a, 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 a crowd, a parade of people, amen, that pass by and they will gaze at him narrowly. Amen. And, and they will almost be um, stupefied at the fact that it, this is the devil. This is the one, amen, that, that shook nations and kingdoms, amen, made the world a wilderness, this, amen. So it will be a reality check, amen, of what is the truth. The devil says, I will do this and I will do that. It doesn't matter. Amen. What the devil says doesn't matter what the Antichrist spirit says. The truth belongs to God. Amen. So the truth can be sobering. Amen. If you have not walked in the truth, if you've not known the truth or you have been deceived by a lie, when the truth comes, it can be very sobering. Amen. The, 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 the separation of what is true and what you thought was true. Amen. And so the, where did it begin? It began with the devil. That Jesus says, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. So when that iniquity was found in him, he was cast down out of heaven. And so he had a, a dream or a vision to be like God, but in a, in a sinister sense. Amen. He wanted the praise for himself. Holy Ghost. And so the Bible says that his tail, that, that dragon, that it drew a third of the angels with him. So he was able to bring them into this false reality, this rebellion against God as if he could destroy God, if, as if he could defeat the kingdom of God. Amen. That is a lie. And yet here we are, that same spirit is in the world, that false reality is in the world. And as believers, we have to participate in the truth to defeat that which is of a lie. We have to operate in the lie, in the light, amen, to destroy that which is of darkness, amen. So that was a false reality, that which the devil wanted to do. Amen. And so that same spirit is in the world today. If it is, if your truth did not come from the Lord, if you're not operating in the Lord's reality, amen, then you are open, you're susceptible to that which is false. Amen. And though it is a reality, it is not true. I, I give you an example. Just because something is someone's reality does not mean it's true. If a person is in um, what we call the, 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 the hood, the ghetto, amen, and he is, he is poor, amen, and that is his reality, and everyone says, the voices around that community says, you're stuck here, amen, you, you're stuck being poor, amen, and, and you don't know that there is a gospel which produces a righteous reality, amen, to, to pull you out of that false reality. You, you may stay there not knowing the truth the whole time that Jesus died for you, amen. The Bible says we know the grace of of our Lord Jesus, though he was very rich, yet for our sake he became poor, that we through his poverty may become rich. Amen. The grace, by the grace of God poured out, that the Lord wants to enrich you. That for the gospel, the Bible says, it is God who gives you the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant in this earth. Amen. To bring others into peace with God. That's the covenant of God. It's a covenant of peace. You don't have to be against God. Many are against God. They don't know it. Or many are uh, un unknowing, unbivalent unto, unto God and, and the things of God. 
Amen. They, they simply don't know. And the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power to salvation to those who believe. To the Jew first, but also to the Greek, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Amen. What is righteousness? Righteousness is what God intended for man in the beginning. Righteousness is of God. It's simply what is right. Amen. To be healed is right. To be saved is right. To be justified is right. Amen. You had no power to be right. But the Lord gave you his own righteousness through Jesus Christ. That's why it is a faith and it must be revealed in the gospel. That which is right is revealed from faith to faith. In other words, from faith to faith, you must walk by faith. And that takes you to another level of faith in light. You, you stake out that area. You, you walk in that area. In other words, you don't go back. That takes you to another level of faith. Faith and light. Amen. So the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So righteousness is the reality intended by the Lord. It is, it is the reality that God intended for you to be saved. You don't have to go to hell to be saved, to accept Jesus as your Lord. That is the righteousness intended by the Lord to be healed. Amen. And I'm not talking about going through all this rigmarole, all this hospital test and back and forth. And I don't know what the doctor going to say. And I don't know what this test is going to say. And I don't know, you know, uh, if it's going to be a, a good report. Amen. And, and that which produces fear, and trepidation, amen, and dependency on, on drugs and dependency on people. Amen. Like doctors. And stuff like that. That that is not fullness. Amen. The Bible says Jesus is made unto the church fullness, and He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Fullness is that which fills up righteousness. That Jesus said to John the Baptist that to baptize him. And John the Baptist says, I need to be baptized of you. Jesus says, suffer it to be so to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. The scripture, the word, the truth has to be filled up by your believing and your actions in accordance to your believing. And so the question is, what is real? Because we are in a world where things present themselves as real and they are not. You can only trust that which is of the Lord. Holy Ghost. Because when when you 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 look at social media, you look at the internet, amen. It is it is it is made in such a way to manipulate you. That's amen. right. To get certain actions and beliefs and thoughts out of you. Amen. To get you to go certain ways, amen. When you look at the news, amen, that there are Shadows of darkness. Holy Ghost. If, if you could sense spiritually, amen. There, there are shadows of, of darkness and there, there, are, there are whispers of wickedness. Amen. It is, it is if the newscaster, the devil is whispering in his ear. Holy Ghost. And he says what the devil whispers. Amen. And so the Bible says to turn unto the Lord from that which was not of the Lord. A lot of people think that repentance, like I don't have any need to repent, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't done anything. But have you fully um, obeyed the Lord? Have you fully walked with the Lord? In any ways that you have not, you have to turn unto the Lord in Ephesians Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to try to pick it up a little bit. It's what is real, amen. Only that which is of the Lord, amen, is, is your reality. Righteousness is your reality. What the Word of God says, what the Holy Spirit says, is to be your reality. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. 
It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, walk circumspectly, that is soberly, amen, not as fools, but wise. So a fool is a person that does not walk in the wisdom of God. That's what a fool is. He's walking in some other wisdom. Amen. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Amen. And so if you're not walking in the wisdom of God, that is being a fool. But you're supposed to be sober. Amen. You are to walk soberly. Not as fools, but wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying that the devil is presenting images in this earth realm. Amen. And you're not supposed to walk in those images which the devil produces. Amen. You're supposed to walk in the message of the Lord. You are supposed to produce and present the image which is of the Lord by walking in the wisdom of God. This is accomplished, according to the scripture, by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you walk, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you'll be, you'll be sober. Amen. The more you're drunk with the Spirit, you'll be sober as far as wisdom. The Bible says to be sober. Amen. To be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, he walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. You have to be sober in this world because there's so much junk and so much information and so much input trying to draw you away. And yet the Holy Spirit is it's just the opposite. He is gathering you unto the Lord, drawing you unto the Lord, into that secret place, amen, to hear from God, to know God. To, to actually, to know the Lord is to have knowledge, amen. To, to receive of, of the Lord, amen. And so the more time you spend with the Lord, the, the more you will understand his word, amen, which houses his wisdom and shows his ways, amen. So you're supposed to walk in the reality. That's what it's saying. You're supposed to walk in the reality, which is of the Lord, which is produced by the word and produced by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will carry you into the truth of the word. And St. John St. John chapter 16. St. John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, he guides you into all truth, what the truth is. Amen. And he shows you the future. He shows you things to come. The Bible says he will even remind you things that the Lord has told you. Amen. He will bring up the scripture. Amen. For the kingdom of heaven is like a household. A man who is able to bring out of his storehouse those things old and new, the things that the Lord has said to you at the appropriate time, the proper tools that you need from the word of God. He can bring it up at the right time. Amen. So the fact that he guides you into all truth shows you that he will lead you. He will guide you into what is righteousness. What is righteousness? The reality of God, that which is intended by the Lord in the midst of a crooked and perverse and dark generation. You can walk in the light and not to be carried away in, the, in these shadows. Amen. Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Amen. So that is, that, that rod is the word. Amen. The correction of the word. Amen. The staff is that which guides. We just said the Holy Spirit will guide and lead you into all truth. The fusion. Amen. Of the word of God, which is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will comfort you and guide you into the things that are, that are true. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. The book of Philippians chapter 4. Why am I saying this? Because God says that I'm raising up shepherds after my own heart who will feed my sheep with knowledge and with understanding. You're not supposed to go through this dark world without knowing what's going on, what is true. And so it is, it is not delving down into to more info. Amen. More, more in intelligence. Amen. It is. It was in the word all the time. Amen. It just had to be revealed on earth. And so God, he gives you shepherds after his own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. So that you can turn away from backsliding ways. Amen. And to turn to the Lord. Amen. Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Things. Amen. The King James says, think on these things. New King James says, meditate. So look at this. It says, whatever is true, whatever is noble or honest, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and of a good report, of virtue and praiseworthy to meditate on these things. So, so this, this compilation of things, what is this? Things that are true and honest and just and virtuous and praiseworthy. What is that? That is righteousness. Amen. This is a description of what is right. Think on what is right. Think on the reality which is intended by the Lord. Amen. In other words, you're going to have to think on it. You're going to have to meditate on what is right. Amen. In Psalms, I'm, I'm going to come back to that, but in Psalms, I'm going I'm to tie that together. The book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 3. Psalms, chapter 8, verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. And then he asks the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him? So he said, I consider these things. I consider your creation. All these things, the earth, the stars, amen. Everything that you made with your, with your fingers, that I consider these things. And you, that along with that Philippians, amen, to, to meditate on these things, to consider these things. In other words, righteousness must be meditated on. It must be considered because there are other things vying for your heart. There are other things vying for your soul. Amen. Amen. And so, Holy Ghost, righteousness is reality. Amen. I am healed. Amen. That's, that's my reality. Amen. I am saved. That's my reality. Amen. Doesn't matter what it looks like, feels like. Amen. Doesn't matter what, what shadows and voices say or do. Amen. I'm going to live and that reality, but it, it just doesn't come. If you've been spending your time meditating on the evil report, Holy Ghost. if you have been spending time meditating on emptiness, Folly, vanity, falsehood. Amen. That means you lifted your soul to an idol. Amen. You were considering those things. Amen. That the, the, if the question was to you, amen, that how are you? 
Amen. I know you 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 you've been through about. How are you? Amen. That that are 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 you feeling better? Amen. What's what's your response according to your reality? Your response will be according to your reality. No, I'm 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 healed by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. That my my health springs forth speedily and continuously. Amen. Because God is my rock. Amen. That means I cannot be moved off of it. <laughs> Man. He's He's my, he's my Ebenezer, <laughs> man. He, he's the rock, holy ghost, which is higher than me, amen. He, he, he is my everything. That, did you know, did you know, <laughs> holy ghost, that when you line up with righteousness, that the Holy Spirit is there to back you up? Just, just test it, <laughs> amen. That begin to praise God or to say that which is right. You will sense your, your help coming. Holy Ghost. You will sense your strength coming. Holy Ghost. <laughs> I remember one time, Holy Ghost, that be, before I knew that it was a spirit of infirmity. You know, I had, when I was a younger man, I hurt my back. Holy Ghost, and, and I had entered into the things of God, and I could barely, I could barely straighten myself up, and I got every belt that I could, Holy Ghost, that I straightened my back as much as I could, and I was praising the Lord, Holy Ghost, for being my healer, hallelujah. What is the result of that? The manifestation of healing, amen. I got, I got with God, I agreed with God, Holy Ghost, I did not agree with that spirit of infirmity, amen, trying to bow me over where I could not praise the Lord, Holy Ghost, I agreed with the truth, amen, so whatsoever things are true, that is talking about in conduct, so it's talking about everything, whatever is true and honest and noble and and just and lovely. It is, it is talking about your life. It is talking about your behavior. It is what produces truth that produces truth in your lifestyle and your behavior. Amen. That which is honest in your life. Amen. That produces in your behavior. Amen. So we see a thing that it is your heart and your soul, which will say what is your reality. Amen. I'm going to show you that in the word of God. When, when your heart and your soul, your soul is your mind, your emotions, your intellect. When, when they agree, amen, that the, the truth for your heart, amen, is what your soul says. And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will begin to speak. So your, your heart is you, the, the, the real you. Your soul is how you choose right or wrong, life or death, blessing or cursing. Amen. And so what the devil wants to do is to get your heart and your soul to be invested in agreement with the false reality. Amen. And so then the devil has inroads into your life because you, the, 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 the heart is supposed to be the place of truth and verity. So yours may not be, but God has designed it, amen, for the heart and the soul to carry the body into whatever that reality, what you call reality. That's why it's so important to walk in the truth. It's so important to walk into righteousness, amen. Proverbs chapter 23, Proverbs. I'll show you this in the word, Proverbs chapter 23, verse seven. Proverbs 23, verse seven. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you, amen. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. As he as he thinks in his heart, you say, I thought you'd think in the mind. 
Amen. When the mind and the heart are joined, amen, Jesus would would answer what they thought, what the scribes and Pharisees thought in their heart. Amen. In other words, their thinking got in their heart. It became their reality. And they opposed Jesus because their reality was against his reality. Their self-righteousness was against his true righteousness. Amen. And so if you look at verse 4, I want to set this in context. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Verses 4 through 7, it says, Do not overwork to be rich. Because of your own understanding, cease. Amen. I want, I want to see that in the King James. It looks, it looks a little different in the King James. Verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thy own, thine own wisdom. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? So we're talking about reality. And so... You think if you are rich, that is your reality, but it has the propensity to draw you away from the truth if you're going after it from your own wisdom. Amen. It says, Wilt thou set thine eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings, they fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's what it is. It is talking about. It's saying that that person is not true. Amen. You're you're sitting down with them. And even though they have given you a meal, their heart is not with it. In fact, they are sizing you up. That if if you are true, if you are sincere, many times people will say, come dine with me. And it is insincere. Amen. They actually are checking you out. They are sizing you up as an enemy. Amen. They want to see your strengths. They want to see your weaknesses. Amen. It's a holy ghost. (laughs) It's a quote of time. (laughs) So this is a description of someone with an evil eye. What is an evil eye? An evil eye is seeing according to darkness, seeing according to lies. Amen. So this person is not a generous person, though though you are in their home, amen, and they are giving you a meal. they, They really are sitting there, you know, hating on you. Holy Ghost. Hoping. Amen. That that you don't eat too much. They, that they do not care about you. Mm-hmm. Holy Ghost. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, or that is his reality. So he has an evil eye. Amen. And so he does not see you as good. And so that's that's the context. But that's the principle. As a person thinks, so he, the, the fusion of the soul. And the heart produces your reality. Amen. The fusion of the soul and the heart. Amen. So it is, it is the unity of his thinking, the mind and the soul, along with his heart, which forms his reality. Amen. And so what does that produce in this earth realm? Amen. There, there are battles going on. Listen, most people... They are what the Bible says they should be. They they are harmless toward malice. But many times along with that, there is a naivete that you're not spiritual folk. And so you don't know what is going on in the spirit realm. You don't know what's going on. The the, the news behind (laughs) the news, the spiritual news behind the news. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 8. Whatever is of a good report, amen, that that is the the goodness which is produced by the word of God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The the gospel is supposed to be good to you, amen. That's the good report. 
Amen. So your expectancy is the good report. And you have to meditate, the Bible says, and consider the good, the good report. But at the same time, there is a battle in this earth realm. A battle between what God has planned for the earth, which is righteousness, and what man has planned. Amen. And so if you're not flowing with what God has planned, that is called the will of God. Amen. To be circumspect, understanding what is the will of God, the will of the Lord. You're supposed to know what that is so that you can participate with the will of God. So there's a battle between what God has planned in this earth, which is righteousness, and really what the devil has planned using people, which is against the will of God. So, so the interests are competing interests, amen. The desires are competing desires. The kingdoms are competing kingdoms, amen. And here you are as a believer, you're supposed to be wise. You need to understand what is the will of God, and what is the desire, which is of the devil? Amen. The devil comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Even if it's in layers, even if it's in steps, amen. Even if it's point A, B, C, it, it is to steal and to kill and to destroy, amen. And so your, your soul and spirit, you could be guilty and being in alignment against the Lord. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 4, the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. You have to be able to distinguish, amen, if what is in your soul is right, amen, because what's in your soul will ultimately get in, get in your heart, amen. What you, what you meditate on will get in your heart. So you meditate on that which is good and honest and just and noble and praiseworthy and lovely and, and virtuous and of a good report, amen. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 and 13. It says, for the word of God is living, that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him in whom we must give an account. So the only thing that can divide the soul from the spirit, amen, so that you can discern what's in your heart is the living word of God. It is quick, it is powerful. It is sharper and it is connected to your healing. You, you're going to have to consider, amen, righteousness to get healed. Amen. You, you're going to have to. I'm saying as you mature, there, there, there may be a gift of faith or a gift of healing involved in your healing initially. But I'm saying as a mature believer, you're going to have to consider what is righteous as your reality? What is righteousness? That which is good and honest and just and virtuous and lovely and praiseworthy and the good report or the end intended by the Lord. The Bible says about Job, you see the patience of Job, amen, and the end intended by the Lord, double for his trouble. God restored everything that the devil took away. Amen. That was the end intended by the Lord. That was his righteousness. You have to consider it. You have to think on it. You have to meditate on it. That has to become a part of you. You say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. That is, that is legal. That's what the word says. But that word has to become a part of you or you have to become one with that living word. Amen. If they cut you, word comes out. <laughs> Man, if they punch you, word comes out. Amen. When the evil report comes, the Bible says that the righteous person is not afraid 
of evil tidings. That's, that's the evil report. Amen. They say you lost everything. Well, my God is able, amen, to restore everything. Amen. You must be convinced. You must be fully persuaded. Amen. The doctor says you're sick. You say, I'm not sick. <laughs> Holy Ghost. The doctor says that this is a, a rare disease. Amen. You, that your quality of life will diminish and death will come sooner. Amen. You say the devil is a liar. Amen. That's, that, is, that is an evil report. Amen. God was upset with the 10 spies that brought an evil report when God's word already said it's a good land. Amen. Flowing with milk and honey. Amen. That I've given you victory over the enemy. They said we are not able to take the land. Amen. Except for Joshua and Caleb. And God was upset because of the evil report. Amen. Well, listen, you say, well, that is unreasonable. How am I going to get to the point that if the doctor says I have a certain amount of time to live or that this thing will be with me? Let, let me make it even more specific. How am I going to get to the point, amen, where I'm not on kidney dialysis? Holy Ghost. How, how am I going to get there? Amen. Is dialysis your reality? Amen. Let me tell you a thing. God gives you the end from the beginning. Amen. God gives you a heavenly vision of what is right. Amen. You're going to have to look at the heavenly by the word of God, you're going to have to say yes and amen to the word of God. That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God knows the sums of my parts. Amen. He has my hairs numbered. Amen. He knows me better than I know myself. Holy Ghost. That he has made me right. This is, this is something that the body of Christ is going to have to get to. Me and my wife have been preaching this for years. Amen. When God worked, he worked six days, amen, and the Bible declares that his works were good. Now, in God's works, there was no sickness, no curse, no disease, no poverty, no demon possession or oppression, nothing coming against the mind, amen. So we can agree that God's works were good, that another word for good is righteous. Amen. So God's works were right. They were righteous. When man sinned, the curse entered into the world. Amen. But the Bible says, Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse, which is of the law, being made a curse for us. And so the Bible says, for this cause was Jesus manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So God has works which are good, no sickness, no disease, no poverty. Jesus came and affirmed that those works were good. He ministered for three and a half years doing only, only the will of the Father. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, open blind eyes, deaf ears. Amen. Nothing but good. Holy Ghost. And then he gave it unto the church. Amen. He says, the works that I do, you shall do also. And greater works than these because I go to the Father. So can we settle it that God is good and that God only does good? Amen. And so the works of God destroys the works of the devil. We accomplish the works of God. They, they ask Jesus, how can we, this is St. John chapter 6, do the works of God? He says, by believing on the one whom God has sent. Who did God send? He sent Jesus. So our faith is in Jesus, who is the word. Our faith is in the name of Jesus. We call upon his name, power of attorney. Our faith is in the blood of Jesus. We are justified by the blood. Amen. We, we are recipients of righteousness. Amen. So with the Lord, he, he says, 
that righteousness and healing are connected. You, you must understand that you are righteous to even have boldness. You, you have to understand or to receive the love of God and to understand righteousness, even to receive the things which are of righteousness. If you, if you are righteous, amen, then you are entitled, amen, to receive what a righteous person receives, amen. So, so you're healed. There's no condemnation. Amen. By the stripes of Jesus, you were, you were healed. Amen. So the works of God will glorify the Lord when you receive your healing. The work that God has already worked. The works that Jesus affirmed were God's works. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus had the seal of the Father. That God did not give him the Holy Spirit by, by measure. God set his seal on him that these were the works of the King of the Father, God. So it is the Holy Spirit, it is the Word of God wielded by the Holy Spirit, which divides soul from spirit so that you can discern what's in your heart. And also it talks about joints and marrow. And so you receive health. Marrow is, is in, the, uh, in, the, in the Bible where they believe health, and it is, it is affirmed even in science. Science doesn't make it true, but science agrees that much of the, what you need is in the marrow. Amen. So it divides the word of God, divides soul from the spirit, and the joints from the marrow. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. Hey, Matthew chapter 13. What am I preaching about? I'm preaching about walking in the reality of the Lord, which is, which is righteousness, that you have to think on these things so that your heart and soul agree with the Lord. Amen. So, because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15 for the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Amen. So what they see, what they hear, what they understand is not right. So they have to see right, hear right, understand right so that they can turn to the Lord. That word converted means to turn lest they should understand and turn. Amen. That means to be converted so that I should, so that I should heal them. Amen. So until you turn from the faults and accept the truth, you cannot be converted. Amen. That means to be in, in, a, in agreement with God, amen, to be one with the Lord, amen, so that he could, the Bible says, so that he could heal you, amen. So your healing comes when you are in agreement with the Lord and you turn from the faults and you turn, you accept what is true, amen, until you are converted to the kingdom of God that allows the lordship of Jesus, amen. So you must, how do you turn? There must be conviction, amen. If, if you are seeing a certain way, knowing a certain way which is not of the Lord, when the truth of the gospel comes, you must be convicted by it. So much so that you turn from the false. What is false? It is idols. It is falsehood. It is emptiness. It has no ability to save, heal, or deliver. It is, it is an illusion. Amen. And so you must turn from the faults. You must turn to the kingdom of God. Amen. And that will disassociate you from the devil's kingdom. That we are in the kingdom of God. So kingdoms are against kingdom. And so one of the, the attributes of the kingdom that you are loyal to the kingdom. You're not double-minded. You're not back and forth. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. 
verses one through three. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance is the reality. Your faith is the reality of what you are hoping for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders attained a good testimony or the good report. By faith, verse 3, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So the things that are seen came from the invisible realm. Amen. So faith is the reality of things hoped for. Your faith, it, it connects you with what you're hoping for. If you are hoping to be healed, well, your, your healing has already been accomplished. That word is forever settled in heaven, and God will give you visions which peer into the heavenly realm. Amen. The Bible says your hope, it is an anchor to the soul that goes beyond the veil of this earth, the limitations of the flesh, the limitations in this earth realm. It, it connects you with what you are hoping for, that vision in the heavenly realm. So it is seen clearly in the heavenly realm. Your faith brings it into this earthly realm. So it is substance. Faith is the substance, the reality of what God holds to be true. Amen. What God says is true. Faith is the reality. Your faith is the reality of what God holds to be true. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So you're able to frame your world just like God framed this world or he filled it up. He made it complete. Amen. He made it right by the word of God. Then you can frame your world by the word of God, the words that you speak. Amen. The Bible says having the same spirit of faith, we believe that therefore we speak. Amen. That's, that's what I'm trying to get you. Two, the point of believing the reality. Amen. There, there is much which is false out there. there. There is much, amen, that is trying to get you away from the truth. Amen. The Bible says you have to meditate. You have to consider what is true, what is just, what is honest or noble, what is lovely, what is, what is praiseworthy, what is virtuous. What is of the good report? You must consider it, amen, until it becomes a part of you. Soul and spirit is one with the Lord. You make the body comply because our members are yielded unto righteousness. And so what you couldn't do, amen, you have to do. That's why Jesus told the man with the withered hand. Amen. He says, to stretch forth your hand. The man can say, how do I stretch forth my hand? It's all withered. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I'm talking to somebody. Oh. Holy Ghost, you're going to have to do what the doctors told you that you couldn't do by faith. Amen. Amen. You, you have to feel your help coming on. You, you have to feel the, the, the Holy Spirit helping you along the lines of truth. You have to lock yourself away from the evil report in other voices and shadows. Amen. That's, that's what I saw. I saw the, 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 the lurking of things in the shadows. I, I heard the whispers of the, the demonic trying to keep people away from the truth. Amen. And so though I am a minister of God and I minister healing, the Bible says that the Lord is giving you shepherds after his own heart, which feeds you with knowledge and with understanding so you can understand what is real. Amen. You cannot make it real if it's not real to you. Faith is substance. It is, it is reality. It must be real unto you. Amen. I, I'll give you a clue. The Lord will cause you to laugh as you meditate on righteousness. Amen. Amen. The depths. Mordanando, ligando, rukush, magaramos y precos. Wonderful, wonderful 
His name shall be called Wonderful. <laughs> Misa! Misa! Rika! Brikuntai! Rika yalendendra bosandaraka! Holy Ghost, the Lord will catch hold of you. Brima Shamba Bab from the depths. Robo Shanta The Lord shall cause you to laugh. Holy Ghost. And as you laugh, Robo Shanta, you shall be brought into the reality of righteousness, which is of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord will cause you to know what is true on the inside. The Lord will work on you spiritually. Amen. It will, it will happen on the inside. Hallelujah. The Lord will change you. You will become another person. Holy Ghost. As you laugh, Rabba Sarabako, as you consider Kodabashata, the promises of God to you, it must be personal to you. Amen. And so the truth shall take hold of you. Amen. You shall be, you shall be firm. Amen. As you stand upon the rock, Holy Ghost. And from this time forward, hallelujah, every time you think about that thing which has given you trouble in the past, past you will only laugh. Holy Ghost. That is, that is the word of the Lord to you. You are laughing your way out of trouble. Holy Ghost. You are laughing your way out of sickness. Holy Ghost. You're laughing yourself out of pain. Really, in these last three years, Rabosa, because of certain things, as you well know, there are many people in pain. Hallelujah. There, there's much pain. Walking in pain. Yamrubos. Driving in pain. Shabo, Ramo, Sandari. Sandari, Sandari, Sandari. Sandari. Hallelujah. Rama. Korabosh. I, I speak to that. Kola Rima Patarabosha Bakata. I break the power of pain off of you. The spirits of infirmity, I break it off of you right now. Rheumatoid arthritis, pain in the joints, pain in the muscles, migraines, pain in the head. Korabasha. Pain in the neck. Kaya ya ya ya. So some of you Ramoshandaba Robo Santa Robo that you your your sleep Shandaba when you when you wake up there there have been pain in the neck that Kurabasata Amen. My my wife told me this Shindara not many days ago Ramoshata. She she woke up with pain, or or she began to have pain in her neck, and she knew it was the body of Christ experiencing that pain. And so the Lord has brought this up now to address it. Amen. What I, I'm your minister. My wife is your minister. Amen. We, we're here to help you. Holy Ghost, shepherds after the Lord's own heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. So now you can be able to move your neck. You can, you're can. you able now to move your back. Amen. Your, your hips. Yeah, I see it, Lord. There was pain in the hips. Unusual pain. And some of you have begun to put up with it. Holy Ghost. Ay, ay, ay. I command that pain out of your hips in the name of Jesus. Pain like needles in your feet, in your ankles, robos, swelling of the legs, pains associated around the veins. I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pain associated with tumors, robos, growths. Yerama Ooh. Ooh. Hallelujah. I command that growth. To fall off in the name of Jesus. To be disconnected from you completely. Every root. Every tentacle in the name of Jesus. Yea. Hallelujah. You are the healed of God. That is your reality. Go ahead and laugh and give yourself to laughter and the Lord shall confirm it. In Jesus name. Amen.